hey guys, how are you today? I hope that you are all doing well and enjoying this beautiful spring-like weather. Isn't this awesome? Yeah. Well, today our lesson is on the Ten Commandments. Um, do you know what the Ten Commandments are? Have you ever heard of the Ten Commandments before? Well, they are ten rules that God spoke to Moses up on a mountaintop. And the amazing thing about these 10 rules, they were given a long, long time ago, but they are still important for us today because they really teach us a lot of good, valuable lessons. And I really think that God knew what he was doing when he spoke these 10 commandments because they are really important. Well, have you ever wondered how following the 10 commandments can help you out in your life every day? Have you ever thought about that before? Well, I have a special guest here today to help explain how the Ten Commandments has helped our family. My special guest today is <clears throat> Ocho Amigo. And um, yes, Ocho Amigo is a frog. He's a very cute, soft, playful frog. And um, for those of you who know Spanish, his name actually translates into eight friend. I know that doesn't really make any sense, but he came to the Vogel house when the Vogel kids were two, five, and eight. So that might explain a little bit of something about his um, lovely name. Um, and boy, did my family love him. I mean, he was loved and loved and loved. The problem with Ocho Amigo was that he actually really only belonged to one Vogel family member. And um, so that caused a few issues. And if you know your commandments very well, you might know that the 10th commandment here says, you shall not covet your neighbor's goods or your neighbor's stuff. And that's some fancy words, um, but what it really means is that it's okay to say, hey, that is a cool frog. Can I play with your frog or can I have a turn with your frog? Um, and just to say, cool toy, I like that toy. But it's a whole nother thing when you're like, hmm, cool frog. I really, really, really like that frog. And all I can think about is that frog and what I can do to get my hands on that frog because I'm just like thinking all the times about that really cool frog. And so when you really start to think about your neighbor's stuff too much and you really want it more than you should, that's when you start to get some problems. And I can say that our house, the 10th commandment was broken a lot. And which led us actually breaking to another commandment, which was this one here that says, it says on here, you shall not steal. We're gonna say that it shall, you shall not borrow your neighbor's stuff without asking for permission. Um, so that happened where he got um, borrowed by somebody and he didn't ask the owner's permission. Um, it happened more than once. And then we would run into even more problems when the person who actually owned Ocho Omigo would go start looking for him. And then when you find him in somebody else's bed and he's all cuddled up in the covers, all snug down in there, kind of tucked away, um, that might cause somebody to be a little bit mad. And well, you know, there's um, this other one that is um, you shall not kill, which actually means that you shall not hurt anybody or say words and do actions that are harmful to other people. And when you find your frog in your sibling's bed where it doesn't belong and you've been looking for a really long time, you might say some things that really aren't very nice. And have ever any of you ever like hit or kicked a sibling before? Well, I would highly recommend that you don't because when you do that, your parent is going to get involved for sure. I mean, there's just no, there's no doubt about that, that mom or dad will step in. And when that happens and mom and dad get involved, you might say some things to your mom and dad that there's another commandment in here that says, honor your father and mother, which means that you should really talk respectfully and loving towards your parents. And you know, when you're really riled up about your frog and your sibling is really riled up about the frog, you might say some things to your mom and dad that, well, aren't very nice either. And then mom in particular in this case might get a little bit upset and there might be some other things that go on here that, well, weren't very appropriate either. And so you can see how we're kind of going on a little bit of spiral all about this really cute, lovely little frog here. And by the time that dad gets home at the end of the day, <clears throat> the frog has found his way to the top of the refrigerator. Either he hopped out of all the commotion or mom put him in timeout. And all of the kids are in their separate corners in timeout and mom is in timeout too. Um, so just saying that this could happen at somebody's house on more than one occasion. 
Um, so as you can see, having a few rules to follow about how to get along with each other is a really good thing. And um, it's helpful to have these commandments to teach us how to get along with each other in the world, whether it's at home or whether it's at school or with people you don't know. They're just really good rules to follow. Um, our world friends today are learning all sorts of things about the Ten Commandments and getting along with each other. So let's see what they're up to. Victor, could you? Shh, 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 shh. Wait for it, Adeline. And now. Nah. Now what? Right now is when Miss Jane gets a cup of coffee after the service and talks to Pastor Donna, which means we have one paper cup's worth of time where there is no law. Fellow Sunday school students! What are you doing, Victor? You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> How can I, Adelphia? With no Sunday school teacher, we are free to do all the things we're not allowed to do. Like stand on the table. But you can't stand on the table. Why? If there's no grown-up to punish me, why can't I? Because, um... Because you're too high up. That's why. Ahem. <clears throat> Attention, everyone. From now until Miss Jane comes in, we can do whatever we want. So, if I wanted to eat my lunch early, I could? Don't ask me, Clara. There are no rules. Hmm. I could stand here and argue with you, Victor. Or I could just finish up the game of tag Jackson and I were playing before church. Tag, do it! Hmm. <laughs> yes! Oh, no. Yes! A giant game of tag! Indoors! But we are not supposed to run in the classroom and... Tag, do it! That's it! Oh, no, you've done it! Get down here! Yes! yes. <laughs> Just a little bit of glitter to make the cow extra sparkly. Uh-oh, nothing gets glitter out of carpet. Except maybe more glitter. I'm eating dessert first, but I feel so alive! Ooh, pretty. All right, Ada, time to break the class bobsled record. There's no record, so it'll be easy. You see? There was no need for any of those laws. Ah! Ah! Hey, Otto, get me out of here. Sorry, Victor, gotta break the new bobsled record. But I'm stuck! All this running around and standing on tables ended very badly. Wait! Listen! <laughs> You know... Don't say it. I know. Rules are there to keep us safe so bad things like this don't happen. I get it, Ada. Actually, I was going to say it's weird that we have this many trash cans in one classroom. Man, how long does it take Miss Jane to drink a cup of coffee? Well, oh my goodness. How long could it possibly take Miss Jane to get a cup of coffee? She was gone for a really long time, and those world kids made a mess in her absence, didn't they? Oh my goodness. And who was responsible for getting them in trouble? Who said, we don't have to follow any rules. We don't have any adult around here. That was Leo. What a silly goofball. He got everybody into trouble, didn't he? And where did all of the kids end up? They ended up in waste baskets, which is really kind of appropriate. And I'm sure that by the time that Miss Jean came back, she had to work to get them all out and what a big mess they had to clean up. Hmm. Well, do you have any rules at your school or at your house that you have to follow? We all usually have some rules at school, don't we? What are some of those rules? Probably um, keep your hands to yourself. That's a good one so you're not poking at your neighbor. 
listen when other people are talking so that the teacher can hear them or you can all hear the teacher. Um, so that's good. Be kind to others. Um, don't take other people's pencils or tip over their crayons on the floor on purpose. That's not really very nice. And walk, don't run in the hallways and around the classroom because we don't want to trip and fall and get hurt. Well, rules are meant to keep each other safe and to help us be respectful and loving, aren't they? So what happens when we don't follow the rules? What happens? Um, it can get pretty loud and out of control, can't it? Yeah, so at our house, it had a lot to do with a frog, but it could also, maybe it's your iPad that you're having a hard time following the rules with at your house, or maybe it's somebody has a Nerf gun, or maybe it's a remote control car, and you've got lots of things going on, and people get in trouble when you don't know how to share and to take turns and to be respectful of other people's things. Well, our story today is from the book of Exodus, and it's from when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments um, way up on top of the mountain. Let's read our story together. It is called, oops, here we go, God's Rules. And it's from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Mount Sinai was covered in thick black clouds. The clouds flashed with lightning and boomed with thunder. God wanted Moses to climb the mountain, so Moses started climbing. Step by step, Moses climbed higher and higher. When he reached the very top, he stopped. Moses, God thundered. Moses looked up. A flash of lightning lit the sky. Tell my people, I am the Lord your God. I rescued you from slavery in Egypt. I always come first. Do not make idols. Do not worship anyone but me. Only use my name when you're talking about me. Choose one day each week to rest and worship me. Call this day the Sabbath. God's voice thundered more. The ground shook under Moses' feet. God, Moses stood tall and still, listening to God's words closely. God wanted to help the people understand how to live as free people, loving God and caring for each other. Obey your father and mother, boomed God. Don't hurt or kill anyone. Married people need to be faithful to each other. Always tell the truth. Don't take things that aren't yours. Be happy with what you have. Don't wish your neighbor's things belong to you. God gave Moses these rules on two pieces of stone. Moses brought these stone tablets to the people. Hmm. So how did Moses, um, how did God get Moses' attention? How did Moses know that God was going to talk to him? Well, there was lightning and there was thunder and God's voice boomed. It said, it sounded like thunder. That would get my attention. I think that would probably get your attention if something really loud and clashy and it was like, Michelle, pay attention. So that's how God got his attention. And then God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. They were on two stone tablets when he came down the mountain. But the first four commandments, one through four, are um, teaching us ways about our relationship with God, how to get along with God. And they're um, really important to remember to always say God's name with respect and remember to honor God and to worship God. So the first four about how, how we get along with God. And then the last six teach us how to get along with each other. Um, just like rules at school. And when we follow those rules, um, when we don't steal from each other, when we don't hurt each other, we don't tell lies about each other, we can live together in peace. And let me tell you, living together in peace is a good thing. And for those of you who might be wondering how we ever brought peace back to the Vogel house after Ocho Amigo arrived and caused all this commotion, um, there was a Christmas that came along and <clears throat> We have Ocho Amigos who came to live with us after Christmas and he was equally loved. And the two frogs um, had a very good time together and had lots of happy adventures. So I hope that you guys have a good week together and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye.
Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. you